Uh, yeah, welcome everyone. Um, glad to be here and uh, talk about uh, IBC in, in an introductory way. Uh, maybe first something about myself. So as I already uh, said, I'm an uh, IBC DevRel engineer um, at Interchain uh, GmbH, uh, which is located in, in Berlin. Um, I studied the bachelor's in engineering, uh, and then later on I also did a master's and online master's in blockchain technology. So really became interested in the technology around uh, 2018. Um, but I didn't really have like a, a very broad uh, programming background. So I was a self-taught programmer. Um, started in, in Python, JavaScript mainly, and then added some Solidity. Um, but found it a little bit uh, hard to like really get get started because you know programs such as as this one uh, were, were not really around uh, back then, and so I studied the the, the masters in blockchain technology, uh, and then I finished this uh, last November and then started uh, this February uh, at uh, Interchain as a DevOps. So me personally, I'm a, I'm a big believer in uh, the multi-chain world, always have been, uh, and I think that was one of the main things holding me back uh, a couple of years uh, ago, which was that uh, back then, you know, every blockchain ecosystem was like pretty much a silo. And I felt like, <clears throat> excuse me, if uh, if I spent some time like learning how to use a particular uh, application framework, like, you know, for example, the Cosmos SDK, um, it would still like, you know, be in this silo and, you know, my time and like efforts were, um, were valuable. And so it was a, a bit of a, a uh, big step for me to take. And I think IBC, for example, or interoperability uh, in a broader sense is, is a really great solution to that. Um, and, you know, that's why I'm a, a really big believer also from the from the perspective of the developer that this is really the way to go. And a personal goal of mine uh, when we look like, you know, five years or 10 years into the future uh, is that we want to make sure that the Cosmos stacks, the Cosmos SDK, Tandem, and, and particularly IBC uh, are kind of a, a default uh, when people learn how to code uh, blockchain. So what I envision is if someone wants to learn how to code, for example, right now you have web development, uh, traditional web development, that is, uh, you have like data science, AI maybe. And I think, you know, in a couple of years, blockchain should be uh, a very accessible uh, thing uh, to learn with IBC at the heart of it. And that's what, what we're actually uh, working towards. Um, then how do you contact me? Um, so this is my uh, email address. You can also find me on uh, Discord. Uh, you'll see me active in the uh, Academy Discord, for example, uh, in the IBC sections. Uh, but one point I, I do want to make is that um, as Cosmos is growing, as the interchain is growing, we're tr kind of trying to move away from like uh, personality-based uh, support. So, for example, you know someone in the ecosystem, you go to them for help. Uh, that is great, but it's obviously not scalable. And what we're trying to do, and me, myself as a DevRel, uh, that is one of our main things that we want to do, is we want to build public forums. And so, in an ideal world, you would actually not have to come to me and interact with me directly, but you would just go to a public forum, post your questions there, and if uh, I can help you out, ultimately, this will be funneled uh, to, to me. Um, but obviously, you can still uh, contact me uh, if you have feedback, especially if, if it's about uh, the process of what can go better. Um, please feel free to, uh, to reach out to me. And then for today, um, so today um, I was thinking what I can do um, to teach you IBC uh, in you know, the span of only uh, one hour. And what I came up with is actually something that I wish I would have had when I started learning about IBC, which is basically just uh, walking through um, the IBC Go repo. And specifically, we're going to do that for one application. So we'll be using uh, ICS20 as an example. So ICS20, for, for you who um, maybe haven't uh, studied on the, the week three material yet, um, that's a fungible token transfer. Uh, which we're going to use as an example. Um, uh, like I said, knowing how to navigate the IBC Go repo. Um, also important, what are not today's goals? Um, we're not going to go like in depth about core IBC. That takes a lot longer than an hour. And I must admit, even myself, you know, I'm, I'm still not uh, like an, a true expert on, on core IBC, I would say. The uh, intention of today is really to look at it as um, 
an IBC application developer. So the great thing about IBC, as we also mentioned in the introduction, is that it's kind of split into two layers. Uh, so you have the transport layer or core IBC, uh, but basically applications uh, that are being developed that leverage IBC, uh, they can be built on the uh, application layer, which builds on top of core IBC, and you only need limited uh, knowledge of core IBC uh, to actually start building, which is pretty great. Uh, we're also not going to do a full review of ICS20, by the way. Um, even though you know a, a token transfer seems like a pretty simple application, there's still a lot of code going into it. Uh, but again, what we want to do is to make sure that essentially um, you understand the flow that is happening. And uh, we're also not going to be setting up a relayer to test things uh, today. This is something you are going to do uh, during the academy. And uh, yeah, hopefully you, you will uh, manage to do that. Uh, if not, um, that's some other things that you can uh, get some help on. And basically, uh, I also made this claim that you'll only need two diagrams to understand IBC. And actually, I've put three on, up on top here. Uh, so maybe three is uh, more like it. Um, obviously, uh, that's a bit of an ambitious goal, but still, we're going to try it. Um, can anyone see, uh, is there anyone, maybe I should ask it like this, who cannot see this? Um, maybe I should zoom in a little bit more. There we go. I'm going to take the silence as a, as a good sign. Uh, so basically, what do we have here? It looks very intimidating at the start, um, but don't be what we're going to go through it. Uh, so basically, what you see here is IBC as a whole, I would say. So on the left, we have one chain, uh, chain A. On the right, we have chain B. So for this, for example, chain A will be the sender, chain B will be the receiver. And then here we see in the middle, the relayers. So uh, I'm going to assume that you did take a peek at least at, uh, at IBC and know uh, a little bit what it's about. But briefly on the left, we have our uh, sender chain sends a packet, uh, which will be received by the receiver chain on the right. Uh, but blockchains cannot directly talk to one another. So Actually, what happens is that they um, have a commit in store, uh, and then a proof of that um, is being sent by the relayers to the other chain, uh, along with the, the packet data, right? Um, and if we take a closer look at here, the blockchain, so we also have a user who is interacting with this blockchain. Um, and if we have the user here, it's interacting with an application. And so what I was saying earlier, we have this separation. This is a separation. On top, we have the application. This is the application layer. And then everything on the bottom is actually core IBC, uh, which is um, um, yeah, the, the, the transportation layer. Uh, and in core of IBC, we have a further um, categorization. Uh, we call it like the three layers of abstraction. Uh, so we have the clients uh, on the bottom, connections on top and channels on top again. And so for application developers, uh, channels are actually the, the layer of abstraction that is most important, uh, but also you need to know uh, what clients are and what connections are. Uh, so let's review it a little. Like I said, it makes sense to start on the bottom. So first we have the clients, because what is ultimately the, the problem that we have? The problem that we have is that in a way, we're sending packets from one chain to another chain, uh, but chain B, for example, it needs to know um, what chain A is. It needs to uh, speak a little bit the language of chain A uh, to be able to handle those packets. And this is what is happening here. Um, so here we see, I think that's actually uh, a little mistake, full node. Uh, anyway, th this should be um, a full node of chain B it is actually running in the other color, uh, in the blue color, a light client, uh, which is here, client, a light client representing chain A. So that means that on chain B, I can reason about some of the state, at least, on chain A. And it, in, in practice, what we need is actually, uh, we need to be able to verify that we have uh, committed something to the store in chain A. That's what we need to verify. Uh, using the light clients. All right, so that's for clients. So when we have these clients, we can reason about um, 
uh, the counterparty chain that we want to uh, connect with. Uh, but then we need, still need to like you know set up our connection. That's the 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 uh, level of of abstraction uh, up top of connections, and both connections and the channels on top they will open with a uh, handshake. You can also see this here. So that's a four-way handshake, and in this handshake we will uh, establish uh, that we have the the correct chain that we're connecting to. So we will verify identity, and it will be uh, a double uh, check. Um, yeah, the, the details of this, you can read, of course, in, in the uh, theoretical uh, content. Uh, channels do a similar thing. So basically connections, you should see them uh, between two chains, so chain A and chain B. And one connection can actually house uh, many, many channels. And every single channel uh, specifies a particular application. So for example, um, uh, transfer ICS20, which we'll be looking at today, uh, that is one specific application, um, and this will uh, use the uh, port uh, transfer. So a port is actually uh, the thing that goes hand in hand with the channel, and so the the, the tuple port channel uh, identifies your application. So, for example, uh, if I start a, a new channel uh, for the for the transfer application on a on a chain that hasn't got any um, any applications yet or any channels opened, it would just be like transfer and channel zero. All right, so this is then again core. Let's uh, go one more, clients, connections, channels, and then an application developer, uh, for example, the developers of uh, ICS20, fungible token transfers, um, they mainly interact with uh, the, the topmost level of abstraction, which is the channels. And when they do that, and we will look at the package flow uh, in, in more detail later, uh, a relayer can pick it up and uh, the interaction can go on. Uh, but as I said, it's easier to look at it uh, from the packet flow perspective right now. So again, what is happening? Uh, this is actually um, more general, so it's not for transfer specifically, but we will see that uh, transfer very, very neatly follows uh, this particular packet flow. So we have our user uh, on the left who is um, interacting with chain A uh, and wants to send, for example, a fungible token uh, to chain B. Um, so the first thing that happens is that um, it's going to send a message, a message uh, that they want to send a transfer. That is going to be the, the send packet, which will be submitted uh, to uh, chain A. Uh, that will be stored. Uh, uh, in store, this commitment proof. Then the relayer is going to pick this up. Uh, the relayer can do this either by querying or um, by seeing an event, picking up an event that is being uh, emitted when we uh, store this commitment uh, on chain A. And it's easier to visualize it if, it, if it's just like um, uh, reacting on an event that is emitted. So let's keep that in mind. Um, then if the relayer has this event, it picks it up. It knows what to do. Um, it recreates the packet because uh, what will actually happen is we're not going to store the packet data uh, directly on chain. We're just going to store a hash um, that contains the packet data. So the relayer knows how to recreate the packet and will also query a proof um, that um, the sent packet was stored on chain A. And this will be submitted in the uh, receive packet message. Uh, to chain B. And so core IBC will take care of this on, uh, on chain B and will call on receive packets, which is for the application. In our case, this is the, the token transfer. And our application token transfer will uh, execute some logic and at the same time also uh, write an acknowledgement. And so now we have seen this in a more general way. Let, let's uh, track back a little bit and see, okay, this user wants to say, um, send uh, 10 tokens uh, from chain A, native tokens from chain A over to chain B. So what happens here is that uh, this on receive packet, it will do some validation, make sure that everything is all right. Uh, it will uh, check the proof and make sure that, um, or actually this will happen in, in core IBC, we'll check the proof and then the application callback will be called. 
and then uh, the, the transfer module on chain B will make sure that um, uh, it's it's uh, mints uh, the voucher of uh, IBC denums um, representing our 10 tokens on chain A. And one step I forgot here is that um, when I send um, my desire um, to send over these 10 tokens, Core IBC will make sure that these 10 tokens are actually um, escrowed. Uh, so make sure that they are locked. And this is actually what we are uh, storing uh, in store, just a proof that uh, we have locked these 10 tokens away. And so it is safe uh, to mint the representation on chain B. So Thomas, these are the sorry first. For interrupting yes. me, I think we do have a question in the chat from Nadia, okay. who is asking when you say relayers look for events, does it mean that relayers are looking at the published blocks? Um, relayers are actually um, listening to a WebSocket. Um, so they, they get the, the ping. Uh, but, yeah, but there's several ways of doing this. Um, that depends on the relay implementation. They can also just check the, the output of the blocks, yes. Uh, so there's there's multiple ways of, uh, of doing this, of finding this information. Um, any more questions? That's the one for now. All right. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, those are like the, the first two steps. So we have sending, receiving, Essentially, then uh, we are done, but uh, it also helps when we send back an acknowledgement to the source chain uh, to know that you know everything worked out and that we have verified um, the commitment proof and that we have minted uh, the um, the IBC vouchers. So this is what we what, what is happening here, and this acknowledgement can be written uh, synchronously and asynchronously. Um, but for the purposes of, of this uh, call, we will now. Um, just look at it uh, for uh, synchronously. Uh, so basically, as soon as we get the on receive packets, it will write an acknowledgement. This acknowledgement again will be picked up by the relayer. Uh, it will be emitted in an event. It's emit it's uh, picked up by the relayer, and the relayer will construct an act packet and submit it uh, back on uh, chain A uh, to Core IBC. And Core IBC will make sure uh, to check everything, of course and then uh, we'll uh, run the application uh, callback on acknowledgement packets. So this is the happy path. Then we also have uh, the option, of course, that you know something is happening here. Maybe the relayer uh, is offline, and um, we cannot actually receive um, our, our tokens on chain B. And so what you want is you want to make sure that you know um, these tokens who are uh, escrowed, the 10 tokens, for example, they are not being escrowed indefinitely, but we can actually make sure that, you know, if for some time, and this is the timeout that you can uh, pick, uh, if, if that time passes, uh, we can actually query a non-receipt. Uh, so because uh, in IBC, we have a very specific um, path where we store our proofs, we can also query um, to show that after a certain point or at a certain point, uh, something is not present in store. And if that is the case, we can send this back to the to the source chain. Um, and this is called a timeout packet. Uh, something very similar as on the acknowledgement side will happen, but instead uh, it will release tokens again in the uh, on timeout packet uh, callback. All right, so these are basically the two uh, main diagrams. There's one more for middleware. Uh, we'll look at it uh, a little bit into the future. Uh, but I think if you if you understand these two, and I would you know um, urge you to to go back uh, to these uh, diagrams uh, very frequently, you will probably have a good understanding of uh, what IBC is all about. And the idea is that we're now going to check this also um, in the code. Uh, so we're actually going to uh, go through this. I'm not sure if there's going to be time enough to do uh, acknowledgement. Uh, and we'll just start with uh, send packets. So we have uh, a certain user who wants to um, yeah, send some tokens. Um, so here we have, um, let's just start, we have the repo IBC Go. So what we see is um, we have our modules. 
So everything in IBC Go is uh, stored under modules. We have um, three folders there. We have apps, core, and light clients. So if we go back here, so we see that our, our light clients uh, that are reasoning about the state of uh, the other blockchain, um, we actually have one, uh, well, two, in fact, uh, Tendermint is the is the most often used one. So this is the one that tracks the state, can track the state of a counterparty, uh, Cosmos SDK uh, chain, for example. We also have Solo Machine uh, that is less uh, less used, um, and this can track, uh, as it says, um, the state of basically one single machine. So that's not a blockchain. Uh, can be useful uh, still um, to participate in IBC even if you don't have a fully fledged uh, blockchain. Thomas, if you want to have a look at the chat, we do have two more questions. All right. Um, let me see. Um, so Seth is asking, am I right to understand that the channels are meant for the modules on chain A and B to communicate between each other? Each connection can have multiple channels for different modules. Um, yes, that is correct, but there's only one single connection uh, from A chain uh, to the relayer, which connects to chain B. Um, so the, the connection doesn't really like connect to the relayer, uh, so the relayer is pretty much separate from that. Uh, and one single connection, this is the ideal, um, but because uh, relaying is permissionless, um, someone could you know simply uh, create another connection or, for example, a connection could go stale, and then you need to uh, start up another connection. So there can be multiple connection objects um, or connection end objects. Would, it, would they actually be in state? Um, but the idea is that yeah, one connection is enough, and every connection can have uh, multiple channels. Um, so thank you for that question. Um, then we have Alejandro, who is uh, asking, is the acknowledgment from the destination chain created after the instruction has been executed or when it's received? Um, or is it decided by the application when to send the ACK? Uh, my question goes to the verification of the execution. If it relies on the ACK or just uh, checks the new state from the light client. I would uh, urge us to uh, wait for this question a little bit and see if we can um, look at it in the, in the code. And then we have one more comment, one channel is limited to a particular message type? Um, not really. Um, you could have different uh, messages. Um, it's, it's pretty much limited to a single application, uh, but there could be like multiple uh, messages or multiple types of packets uh, that you send. Uh, and then one more question, what would happen if someone created a chain with the same chain ID that is uh, already uh, an established IBC connection? Um, so essentially chain ID um, does not really um, identify your chain. That's why, why we use actually client identifiers. Um, so for our, uh, our light clients, uh, because as you said, you know, chain ID, um, it's, it's not unique. So uh, someone could, um, yeah, present themselves as, as, as the chain. Um, but on chain, and this is uh, something that will be checked in the connection handshake, uh, this light client identifier is, is supposed to be unique. Uh, so that's what we're checking. Um, all right, uh, I think those are the questions for now. We're gonna uh, keep the, the question for Alejandro uh, in mind and get back to um, the code. As, as I was saying, light clients we have here, then uh, core is just the transportation layer. So we see here, for example, client, connection, channel, port, um, et cetera. And then today we'll be looking at apps. And here you see interchain accounts as an app. We have fee middleware and the uh, original uh, application that we had for IBC, which is transfer. And then if we take a closer look, um, you will see that the, the transfer uh, module is an IBC application module, but it's actually also just an, an SDK module. Um, so if you're familiar with, with SDK modules, and you should be by now, 
uh, you will see that this has uh, pretty much the same um, the same look. So we have our module.go, we have a types folder, um, we have a keeper folder, those are the most important ones, uh, and then also our client folder. Simulation uh, right now is, is not that important, we can, um, we can ignore this. Uh, and one more thing that is important is that IBC creates um, our uh, there we go. So in an IBC module, we also have this file uh, IBC module.go. Um, and what will be here um, that is uh, yeah, just defining uh, the, the, the implementation of the, um, the interface for an IBC module. And as we scroll down, uh, this is important. And this is why I actually have the middleware stack as well. So this diagram has some middleware in it. So uh, IBC also allows uh, to, for, for you to build middleware on top of a base application, but we're not going to really um, think about this uh, today. Uh, the reason why I included this is because if you ignore these middlewares and just um, assume that there's a base application in core IBC, uh, you can see that uh, at times there's communication coming from base application uh, to core IBC, and then at other times from core IBC uh, to the base application. And when it goes from core IBC uh, to the base application, those are basically the handshake callbacks and the packet callbacks. And if you remember correctly, uh, here, for example, on receive packet, uh, I call this a callback. We have on acknowledgement packet, we have on timeout packet. Those are uh, essentially uh, the packet callbacks that we saw here. Um, let's uh, go back to packet flow. And if we scroll down here, you see on chain open init. Those are essentially the, the channel opening uh, callbacks. We have an on chain open try, on chain open ACK. I um, hope I'm not going too fast. On chain open confirm. So basically, those are the four steps uh, for the handshake. Then we also can close the channel. It's not really important to, to focus too much on this. Um, basically, what this will be doing uh, is um, checking if we have the correct version. It's, it's about version negotiation for your application. And then here we see indeed on receive packets which is what we have here. Uh, we'll take a little bit of a closer look at the code later uh, on acknowledgement packets, as you see here. And then at the end, we will also have an on timeout packet. So basically when I uh, review a, a new uh, IBC application, this is one of the first things I check. Uh, I, I check you know, what, what is happening on the on receive, on the on acknowledgement and on timeout. Uh, but if we start, uh, here on the left from uh, wanting to send the packet. I actually don't need to um, have a callback. Uh, so if we um, go back here, um, these callbacks is if um, if some other action uh, triggers um, your, uh, your application to do something. But here we are initiating the action ourselves uh, or uh, send packet. And in this case, it will be a send transfer. Um, so this is just uh, interacting with the keeper. And from the SDK part, you should already know that when we, when we send the message, let's go to here first, um, this will come to the uh, message server. And here we see it's transfer. Um, we're not going to check all of this, so it's just going to unwrap the context. Um, I think I'll do some manipulation. Uh, it's going to check some things, and then here, we're going to try to do uh, the send transfer method on uh, on our keeper. So here we have send packet. Um, this is more generalized, and this is a core IBC function uh, that actually send transfer will be will be using, and we'll take a look at it later. Um, so some other things that you see happening if this uh, if this works out is uh, we'll be uh, emitting some events as we see. As we discussed before, and based on on these events, then the um, the relayers remember uh, can uh, pick up the fact that there has been a, a send transfer. All right. So basically, the core of this um, 
this method transfer on the message server uh, is this send transfer. So let's take a look at it. Uh, so where do I find it? Um, it's on the keeper. Um, and in, yeah, this is a little bit up to the uh, application developer, but here, for example, it's in this file, relay.go. Um, not sure if I should put it on the other side. Let's do that. So remember, uh, we had this uh, function right here. Uh, this is the whole um, explanation, uh, which essentially makes the distinction between sending a native token to another chain or basically sending back um, an IBC voucher uh, to its original chain. Uh, so we have the, the terminology source zone and sync zone, but that's like specifically about uh, transfer. This is all also in, uh, in the academy content uh, if you want to know uh, more details. But anyway, here we see we have the send transfer. So basically, if we have our message, again, uh, we go to the message server, it's being routed our message. Uh, we have this function being called, uh, and in turn, the uh, send transfer. Now, uh, here there's actually two um, to enable private functions as well. This has been added uh, quite recently. And so if we scroll down, uh, let's take a look. Um, so we see that um, we get some, uh, some validations. Um, if, if something doesn't check out, uh, some errors will be, um, will be emitted. Um, we gather some information about our uh, source channel, about our destination channel and port. And then ultimately, um, let's see. This goes down quite a bit. So yeah, this is, this is a very uh, big function that will then also uh, make this distinction between um, being the original chain, um, sending uh, native tokens or sending back um, uh, IBC vouchers. And this is actually what I wanted to uh, look. So basically, if everything checks out, um, if we um, do all the checks, if we know uh, what type of asset we are sending, if it's a source chain or a sync chain or source zone or sync zone, uh, we see that the packet data is being constructed. So we have our packet um, being constructed here. And then this is the uh, other important thing. Uh, remember, I mentioned um, officially, like Core IBC uses send packets. But when we build our application, we're going to build uh, a method on top of that. And this is exactly uh, what we see here. So here we are in the uh, send transfer function. And this is basically just going to uh, wrap around the send packet um, that is being uh, provided uh, to us by core IBC. And then, okay, you see here the send packet, uh, and then you're probably wondering, uh, where do I find this send packet? And then we have to go back um, to our IBC Go folder structure. So actually, uh, as I mentioned, this is um, uh, core IBC. So it's not gonna be in the apps folder, so we can close this for a while. Um, we have to go to core. And um, yeah, this is send packets. And as we were saying right here, when we have applications, we're mostly interacting with the channel uh, abstraction. So a good place to look, and you could of course also just check here and, and see where it is. Um, but if we think about it, uh, then we could check, uh, let's see, where is it? This has opened up again. Um, we could look in channel. And so what are we actually doing? We're sending a packet. Uh, so we go to our keeper. And here we see packet.go. And there we find our send packets. And so this is basically how you reason about the application flow. So you have your uh, user in initiating something, a send transfer, for example. Um, that is going to contain inside, it's going to wrap around a send packet from core IBC. And then uh, it's just using core IBC. And you can go through this uh, function uh, yourself. It's, again, it does uh, quite a lot of, of checks. Uh, make sure that everything is okay. Let me just scroll down. 
And okay, here then at the end, uh, we see that ultimately we have a commitment. So what is going to happen if we go back to our package flow, uh, like I said earlier, um, if everything checks out and you know the user actually has these 10 tokens, for example, those are some of the checks that are being uh, implemented. Uh, we can store this commitment. And so we have this commitment here. Uh, and then we're going to set some other things. Um, we're also going to emit uh, the send packet event. Uh, again, send packet event is important because this is what the real layer needs um, to, uh, to construct the packet and to respond and uh, put this receive packet in place. Um, I think this is probably good for now. Um, again, you can go through this uh, yourselves or maybe um, it could be easier if you just look at the um, at the checkers blockchain that we're going to make um, and uh, use a simpler example. But you can basically check and, and look at all of these functions. Um, it's okay. Next step, what we have now is we have successfully um, committed or um, submitted uh, our message transfer. It has been uh, stored on chain, our commitment. Oh, and uh, one more thing. If we were to actually go to this particular function, I'm not going to do it because of uh, time right now. Uh, but if we have this function, for example, you would see that it uh, actually returns a hash. So actually what we're storing uh, on chain, again, is, is not the actual packet data, but just a hash of it. All right, and then we have the, the right part, so the receive packets. Sorry, and Thomas, before yes. you move on to the right part, oh, we do have two more questions, perhaps. All right, let me check. I think uh, this one from Seth is, is new. So when we say connection in this context, is it just an abstract idea to say that there is a connection between chain A and uh, B via the rail layer? Um, it is an, an abstract idea, yes, but there, there are also, also um, there are objects being stored on chain that um, yeah, essentially it contained the information. Um, that is the connection is just the idea of the handshake between the chains through the relayer. Um, I, I would watch out, you know, using through the relayer because if you put it like this, uh, it seems like the relayer is like um, a really crucial aspect. And the relayer is crucial in the sense that they need to relay the packets. Um, but it doesn't really matter like who the relayer is. So uh, I don't want you to think that you know if one particular relayer starts a handshake, for example, or uh, finishes the handshake, um, that something specifically um, points to them, right? So the connection is um, uh, irrespective of any relayer. We just need the relayers to um, to send over the or to relay the messages, pretty much. Then we have uh, Nalin. How is timeout sent without chain B ever receiving a receive message from chain A? Uh, this is where light clients are expecting stuff to happen and uh, they ask to send a timeout when it does. Okay, so this is back um, going to our packet flow number two. Um, so this is uh, again, and this is also stored here. So when we have our clients, um, in the design of our clients, we basically have standardized uh, keypads. Uh, I'm not going to look into this right now because this is uh, quite specific. But basically, it means that um, if a packet were sent, if a um, token transfer were su successfully submitted and received, we know where on chain B uh, this would actually be stored. So we can check this path. And if the the, um, the path does not contain the receipt, then we know uh, if the timeout has passed, then we know it's okay to send this timeout packet message, right? Because um, because there is a deterministic uh, path where we store uh, everything we need to store for the receipt, um, we can query the non-receipt. That's essentially how uh, this works. So good question, by the way. Uh, then uh, Abhishek, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Timeout is sent from your own side of the connection, not the other side. 
when a time threshold is passed and there is no act, uh, I think yeah, just replying to the uh, to the question. Thank you for that. I think it's fine to move on then. Let's try to um, get at least um, this unreceived packets clear, and then we'll have uh, some more time for questions. Um, all right, so we are here now. So essentially, um, our relayer, that's the situation, now has uh, submitted a received packet message. Uh, let's close this up for now, and this one as well. And so then what will happen is our uh, message will be routed to core IBC. Core IBC will call this callback. And so let's have a look. I think it's uh, still open here. Yeah. So again, this is our uh, IBC module.go file. Um, this is uh, a suggestion for a name, by the way. It just needs to be defined somewhere in the, in the transfer package. But you will see that mostly um, application developers will use IBC module.go or module IBC.go. Uh, something similar, but this is basically implementing uh, the interface. And maybe it's also good to uh, mention, it's not super visible here, but it says IBC module uh, implements the ICS26 uh, inter interface for transfer. And we can take a look at this. Um, and maybe this is not super um, uh, intuitive, but this is under port. Um, let's see. So basically, is it this one? No, this is not the correct one. Sometimes I also still need to check. Um, it's not module.go either. Um, Anyway, I cannot find it for now. For time, I'm just going to move on. Uh, if you go to the um, documentation on IBC and the Academy, for example, it will simply uh, link and you will be able to find it. Uh, but basically, it just um, gives you a, a theoretical overview of the interface. And then it just says, OK, implement on chain open init uh, for the four steps, um, the callbacks to close the channel, and then obviously also our on receive packet, on acknowledgement packet, and on timeout packets. Um, so here we have this function that is being called um, if uh, core IBC has received and verified um, that the, the commitment is stored. And so let's take a look. Um, here again, some, uh, some decoding of the packets. Um, let's see. So basically, um, as we can see here, if this on unreceived packet uh, callback is called, uh, what we expect at the end, if everything is going successful, is an, an ACK. Um, and there's two options. ACK can be a success, or uh, ACK can be an error. Um, if the ACK is successful, uh, we're going to write our, our, ACK, uh, our acknowledgement, sorry. And you will see at the end, uh, this is what will be returning the ACK. Um, but so if it is a success, what we are going to do is we're going to uh, have the on received packet callback um, basically from the application. So here IM is actually a shorthand for IBC module. And so this is a pattern that you will often see. Uh, so if you have an application, uh, your application calls on received packets. First, it goes to uh, IBC module.go to this function. And then uh, this will be uh, wrapped around uh, an application level uh, on received packets. And in fact, if we have middleware, uh, so for example, you have a base application, middleware one, middleware two, um, our packet callbacks, as we see here, are going from core IBC to base application. 
And so what will happen is that first um, the um, core IBC callback uh, will be called in IBC uh, module.go. And then you will see that here, if we have middleware, our first middleware, actually middleware two actually here. So the, the top level middleware will first call its on receive packet. Um, then that function will be will be called. And then if everything checks out, if there's no errors being thrown, um, it's going to be middleware one. And then we have essentially everything nested until we reach the base application. And so how do we find this? This is again in the keeper. And then we need to go back. Uh, so we have apps. Uh, we're still in transfer. We have keeper. And then it is again uh, relay.go. Uh, all right, so relay.go. So this was also the file where we had our uh, send transfer function. If you remember, let's scroll down. Uh, and then the second function here is on receive packet. So basically, uh, again, this is um, just the application level on receive. And um, this will be um, making sure that ultimately um, our, uh, our IBC uh, DNAMs are being minted. Um, again, this, this is a lot, and this is a pretty big function. Let's see if we can at least um, get what we are looking for. So here, you see, for example, uh, we're going to send uh, some coins. Um, yeah, I think ultimately uh, you can look at that on your own. But essentially what has happened, we have seen uh, the unreceived packet is being called on the application and then the application is going to execute its, its own logic. And at the same time, uh, get our uh, act back. And so this is what's happening here. And we are returning our act. Um, we don't have a lot of time, but essentially um, then if the, the act is being submitted uh, on the source chain again, we have a very similar thing. We have on acknowledgement packets. Um, then again, you know, just some checks, uh, throwing some errors if, if anything is uh, incorrect. And then again, we have um, uh, our uh, on acknowledgement packet being called uh, on the application level. Um, and so this would again be in this relay.go. Um, let's see, yes, here. So we have here our on acknowledgement packet, and this one is actually uh, not very complicated um, because uh, in transfer, we actually don't do anything with the uh, acknowledgement except for, uh, yeah, refunding our, uh, our token packets if everything checks out. Um, so remember when we had the packet flow, uh, this was the, um, or sorry, what am I saying? Uh, oh, sorry, this is if the acknowledgement returns an error. So if something went wrong. Um, so basically, uh, this is another flow where something went wrong. Uh, so either you have the timeout or the uh, ACK gets back and it's an error. Uh, then your tokens are being refunded. But it, if it was a success, um, then uh, as you can read here, uh, we don't really do anything with it. Uh, and something similar you will have for um, for timeout as well. But let, let's recap. Um, so again, when we have like a new uh, application that we're visiting, what I do at first is um, check out uh, our IBC module.go. It's still open here. Um, check the uh, different callbacks. So we have callbacks for our channel. Um, then we have the on receive uh, packet, the on acknowledge packet, act packet. Um, and then you can also um, take a look at the keeper. And there I usually start from the message server. So I take a look at all of the um, messages that we can send here uh, for transfer. For example, it's only one, um, and maybe that's the confusion uh, that someone else had uh, earlier. But in principle, I could define uh, multiple messages to be sent um, 
to my uh, IBC application module. Um, let's take another look at the um, at the questions. Uh, so we have George um, saying, if there's any time left, can you speak to ports and channels? Why are both required uh, and their differences and relevance to each other? Um, that's a great question, actually. Um, so usually we think of um, port and channel as um, pretty much a tuple. Uh, so basically, yeah, a couple together. Um, I'm actually not 100% sure why the design was taken and why, for example, um, the port was not a, a part of the channel. Um, but yeah, they're, they're very like uh, closely intertwined. Um, and you also always have like, um, for example, if you have a channel 17, for example, uh, it is related to a particular application. So for example, um, your application uh, needs to bind to the port. And so um, in the in the language of the SDK, that's essentially like taking up uh, or claiming a capability. Uh, and so an application has claimed a port um, or, and this port is, is connected to the channel. Um, so in fact, yeah, the, the port and channel is always like combined, but it's like, you know, somewhat a separate thing. Um, but yeah, you, you, should, you should, sorry. Go ahead. When when you say application, what what do you mean by application? Like like a specific blockchain or like a specific module within inside of the inside of the uh, implementation? Yeah, sorry. Um, so when I when I use application, uh, I'm thinking specifically about an IBC uh, application module. Um, so essentially, your your entire blockchain could have uh, multiple uh, modules that are working together. Uh, uh, so yeah, it could have multiple applications in the sense that, you know, you have modules working together, or it could just be like, you know, your one grand application module uh, for your blockchain. And I think, for example, the checkers blockchain that we are building in the hands-on exercise would be a blockchain like that, that just has like, you know, the one uh, huge checkers um, module that we will uh, uh, also um, extend to be IBC enabled. Um, but essentially, I'm, I'm more speaking of uh, modules rather than the blockchains as a whole. All right. Um, yeah, thank you for a, a few pretty great questions. I don't know if there's any last questions. I see that we're four minutes in. Um, if not, I, I do want to urge you, like, you know, to uh, play around with this. Um, look at the other applications. Um, so we have, for example, um, yeah, fee, uh, which is middleware. So that's also interesting, maybe um, just to uh, lift some of the of the sleeve. Um, so instead of having our IBC module here, then we call it IBC middleware.go. And so what it does is it implements the middleware uh, struct. And so essentially, um, you can go back to middleware. Middleware is um, a module. So it, it is in fact a module as well that just wraps uh, the base application or wraps uh, a nested base application. So a base application nested with other middleware. Um, and then it has this, this keeper as well. Um, yeah, the, um, the, the theory content will also um, have a, a bit of a better explanation and a bit more full. Um, but that's also a good one. And then we have uh, one more, uh, which is interchain accounts. Um, this one is a bit of a complicated one because it, um, it has uh, essentially controller and host. So interchain accounts is um, an asymmetrical application. Um, so if we just go back to this, um, for example, if, if I um, send uh, tokens from chain A to chain B, I can just as easily, like you know, reverse this. Um, there, there's no real difference between uh, the one side and the other side, and you also see this in the port, which is just transfer on each side. But for interchain accounts, what it does is essentially it it um, sends a um, message to be executed from uh, so for example a user on chain a sends a message over 
to be executed on chain B, and this is actually asymmetrical. So that's also uh, interesting to take a look at. And maybe one last thing, we also have a readme. Um, let's see if we can see preview. Yes, we can. Um, and this is a, basically in the IBC Go repo. Uh, on the bottom, we have a readme that lists all of the uh, applications that are being worked on, or maybe not all of them, all of the, those that we are uh, aware of. Um, so basically, if you're working on an application and you want us um, to add it here, uh, we are building a process to basically audit um, uh, if your application can be on here. Uh, but these are some some different applications that you can also look towards. Um, so yeah, once more, I would uh, urge you to uh, play around a little bit, um, get familiar with the uh, folder structure, both in the SDK, but also specifically uh, for IBC. And um, yeah, once more, like I said in the introduction, um, I'll, I'll be there for questions in, uh, in the IBC uh, part of the academy. And uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this, uh, this presentation. Uh, if you have feedback also, please feel free to drop it. Um, I was kind of experimenting with uh, going through the code, so uh, uh, open to feedback as well. And yeah, once more, thank you everyone for, uh, for joining.